to a burning ring of fire. I went down, down, down. Hey, today I'm going to talk to you about an area in the Pacific Ocean that's home to 75% of the world's volcanoes and is responsible for 90% of the world's earthquakes. I'll talk to you about how it works and how it affects the world around us. I'm talking, of course, about the Ring of Fire. Yeah. It stretches for over 25,000 miles and contains 452 volcanoes. So, why is the Ring of Fire so active? How could such a large portion of the world's natural disasters happen here? To understand this, we have to go back more than 100 years, all the way back to 1912. In 1912, German scientist Alfred Wegener theorized that hundreds of millions of years ago, all seven continents formed a single landmass called Pangaea. Eventually, the continents began to drift apart. Wegener called this continental drift. His theory wasn't widely accepted until 1950, 20 years after his death, when scientists finally began to map the ocean floor. So the short version of why the Ring of Fire has so many more volcanoes and earthquakes is that the Pacific Ocean has convergent plates. Plates that just so happen to be ramming into each other. And the Atlantic Ocean has divergent plates, which drift apart. A more complicated explanation is that the Pacific Ocean tectonic plate is being subducted at at least six different points. You all remember that subduction is when one plate runs over another, shoving it downward. Because the plates in the Pacific Ocean are convergent, the Pacific Plate and a couple of other smaller plates are being smashed into and pushed downward from all sides. These clashes form the Ring of Fire. But how does that result in such a large concentration of volcanoes? The Pacific Plate is being run over at six different points, right? When the rundown parts of the plate reach about 700 kilometers underground, or about 435 miles. It enters the Earth's mantle and begins to melt with temperatures up to 1700 degrees Fahrenheit, the mantle's upper boundary. The melted tectonic plate becomes magma, which rises to the surface to be erupted in volcanoes, creating volcanic arcs in the ocean, like Japan, the Philippines, or New Zealand. The formation of volcanic arcs in this manner also explains the lack of islands in the Atlantic. The plates there are divergent, so none of this happens. Okay, but what about the earthquakes? Why are there so many in the Pacific in particular? Simple. It's because there are so many convergent plates. The plates slam into each other, causing earthquakes. There isn't really another place on Earth with a comparable concentration of convergent plates. This is what makes the Ring of Fire so special. So, unique geological circumstances allow for this Ring of Fire to exist. But how does this affect us? Tsunamis. While not directly caused by the ring itself, they are a byproduct of earthquakes. In 1960, an earthquake struck Chile, killing almost 6,000 people. This was the Valdivia earthquake, the strongest in recorded history. The resulting tsunami raced across the Pacific Ocean and devastated the Big Island. Waves as high as 35 feet were reported as far away as Japan. But an earthquake doesn't need to be the strongest in history to damage Hawaii from thousands of miles away. Living on an island chain in the middle of the Pacific, there's a good chance that we're going to be hit by a tsunami no matter where it happens along the ring. It almost isn't possible to be positioned any worse. This is why it's important for us to know what to do when we're about to be hit by a tsunami. A lot of it's common sense. For example, if you're at the beach and the ocean recedes, or the ground starts shaking, Get away from the beach, get to higher ground. In general, try to think of some good routes to get to places with high ground that won't be really congested when a tsunami happens. If you're at home, rinse your bathtub out, fill it up with water. It might sound gross, but that water could save you if we lose it for a few days. And, you know, have some canned goods. Thank you, this was my presentation on the Ring of Fire. I hope it was informative.